Ahoy everybody! Thank you for tuning in to Airborne Entrepreneur! Hi, it's Alex again and welcome to my podcast and thank you for tuning in to especially uh, to our topic around awareness and self-awareness. I love this topic and I really think it's most important step or first step to start your personal development journey or become a great leader or become a great parent or partner or a friend. It doesn't really matter. We should be building up self-awareness uh, in our life. And why is that important? Because self-awareness is a vital first step in taking control of your life, creating what you want, mastering your future, where you choose to focus your energy, emotions, your personality and uh, reactions that all that reminds where you will end up in life. When you're self-aware, you can see where your thoughts and emotions are guiding you. And it also allows you to take control of your actions so you can make the necessary changes to get the outcomes that you desire. Uh, This may include changes to your emotions, your behavior, your action, your personality. Until you achieve this, you will have a hard time making changes in the direction your life is taking you. And I really am aware of that because I changed so much in my life from the time that I was actually exercising and building up the self-awareness. And uh, I have a few things probably where to start because I always uh, teach my clients or, or showing them the diagram or the process, how we are thinking and how we can be in ease or in uh, resistance or you can call it in peace and in resistance or in love and is a great example because for example we need to be aware that we can't really change our external circumstances anything what is happening outside of us we can't really influence that much because after that that something happened we usually react or respond And when we are actually self-aware, we can respond. And uh, as we all know, that is all trainings when you are, you know, first aid. Like you need to know how to respond if something happened to save someone's life. And that's why we should do that in a normal everyday life as well. We don't want to react or overreact. And what I'm saying, what that means, uh, this is all based on uh, NLP model, meta model. It's just so many models and psychology around this, how actually that perception or creation of our perception and reaction is working. And just maybe simplifying that, I would like to try to explain that, okay, that is something that is happening outside of us, external circumstance that we can't really change. It already happened. Now it's going through our senses or on, and our filters there are three basic filters that we use and it's a generalizing distortion or deleting. And sometimes we just delete part of the event because we don't want to remember or it's not important for us and uh, or, or because we want to really function the way we are functioning and we want to be effective. That means you, we actually need to, we actually need to delete some things that are happening around us. As an example for those filters, when you're sitting in the chair and you're working on your computer and you're in the work, you, you're kind of deleting the stuff that, are, that is happening around you and what you feel. Like, for example, your chair is feeling so comfortable and you really like it. And uh, there is blowing the air from the side. You can feel the air condition is on, but you're not focusing on those things. They became automatically there, but we're deleting them because... If you will have to pay attention to uh, thousands of things that are happening right now, we won't be able to function properly and effectively. That's why we use some filters and um, and also generalization is really probably well-known filter that we use. And that that is the filter when we all speaking the way like, oh yeah, that was, uh, that always happened. Or yeah, kids always doing that. That is generalizing. And we have other filters we are using and that's uh, something like beliefs, values, attitude. Um, it can be our personality, our energy. Uh, that can be memories. 
uh, that can be something we already experienced. And uh, those are all fil filters that we're creating over the life and uh, and they are in our brain. We, it, it's all happening unconsciously. We don't really even know about that. If we are, of course, not really building up the self-awareness. And I will go back now when we talk about the event that happened, that external circumstances, and we have to react or, or respond, uh, that, that the event is going through our filters and we creating the thought. And the thought can be anything negative, positive, or it can be anything um, that is serving you or is not serving you. And that thought, it's kind of going with, with some kind of emotional energy. We usually put some energy into that and, and we create a reaction and feeling and after that we creating or we doing choices and that is uh, getting to our action and our behavior and basically it's like a cycle that means something happened outside of us externally but we we taking that through the filters in our brain and now it's it's kind of saying like oh somebody's angry or this happened and we we create these uh, beautiful stories and the story is creating um, emotions and feelings and after that, we made choice and action. This is the cycle that is happening basically in a seconds, and we don't even think about that. But when you when you're going back and you are starting to building up awareness, you actually can influence what thought you choose to have, and that will be influencing how you behave, what choices you are doing, and what action you will take. And as an example, I can compare basically to situations. Very simple. Partner raises their voice. Now, the first thought is, ah, oh, they don't love me. A reaction, oh, they have done something wrong. Feeling, I feel angry. I have a choice, is, oh, this is wrong. And action will be walk out of the room. That means all that story, all that story that we created around that uh, our partner don't love us because he's raising their voice, it's creating all those things that at the end, the action will be or behavior will be that, that we will walk out of the room and we will be super angry. And that this is when we are living in resistance and this is when we don't have any awareness. But when you start to build up the, the, the awareness around your thoughts and what do you think and how you, how you respond, you can have, again, same situation. Partner raises their voice. Now it's going through your filters and senses and uh, it's like they're experiencing her effects of, of what they are thinking. That means you are saying yourself like, okay, my partner is angry and is just experiencing something that happened to him, not me. That means I can't really change that. I will just listen why he's raising the voice, what is the problem and, and maybe how can I help? How I can help? Uh, and reaction is more, I'm going to love you to be who you are and not, not judging you. I'm not judging you. That means you really calm yourself down and, and don't put any judgment to your, on your partner while they raise the voice. And now the feeling that you create through those thoughts, it's that you feel love and you feel compassion. And your choice will be maybe, yeah, I'm going to hold his, holds the space for him or for her. And uh, you just listen. And the action is basically at the end can be something like you reassure them that you love them. And, and ask them, you know, how you can help, what you can do. And nobody's walking out of the room. And the situation can be calm down, you know, the partner can stop to be angry. And maybe with your, actually, your action and your response, you will be able to calm your, calm your partner down and, and will be probably great conversation after that. This is what I'm talking about. There are two same situations and all is about us, what we think, how we actually create that response or reaction or, or overreaction on the external circumstances because we can't really change that our partner is already raising voice. That happened already. We just can, the only, th only thing that we can choose is how we will react, how we will respond. And if you want to have great outcome, you have to respond in ease or in peace or in love or, in, you know, compassion and, and have more, I would, wouldn't call that positive thoughts. It's more about you can choose what you think and you can choose to create your story. And 
let's be honest, if somebody is late or somebody is not answering the phone, we usually create these crazy stories, like somebody doesn't love us or somebody, I don't know, is with someone else rather than with us. This can happen with friends, not just with partners. And we create all the big story around and the story is getting bigger and bigger. And if you notice or you can notice in your body, you you basically making yourself more emotional every second, feeling sad. You're, you're making yourself feel more sad and disappointed and you're getting emotional sometimes you cry that means you kind of like you're creating this and you feed that thought and support that thought like that's great thought that's great story and you feed the story and basically you have really bad outcome that means that they are just two situations um that can happen it, it is all so many information or so many there are so many circumstances that we can talk about that we can influence the outcome of them and we don't need to argue we don't need to be angry and we can actually help other person maybe even become better person that means just remember this is like a first small start or small step to start to be aware of our thoughts and i really like to talk about thoughts because we have 70,000 thoughts of, uh, during the day. And as I said, that circle, that, that is a circumstance, there is a thought, there is a reaction and feeling, and there is a choice, action and behavior influenced by that thought. And uh, that thought is creating our feelings. And as I said, it's just a, just, a, just a beginning. And we can choose what we think. And that's why I always love to talk about that because based on that 70,000 thoughts we have in our mind or our, our brain, we don't even know about them, but we used to kind of choose the negative ones or the worst ones because it's easy to get angry. It's easy to get frustrated. It's just easy to, you know, let it out. And um, that's why I always said, just, just start with thought. If you want to build up your awareness self-awareness you need to start to think about what you think and the best exercise is when you start with uh, let's say morning or waking thoughts in the morning when you're opening your eyes just catch yourself straight away and and see what you think about is your thought let's say oh today is not very nice weather that will be bad day is that kind of negative or you're already thinking like oh i'm late i don't have enough time or you actually thinking more, let's say, positive way, or let's say the way that is actually your thought serving you. That means you actually say, thank you very much. I'm so happy that I actually wake up today and I can't wait to see what will happen today or who I'm going to meet up or yeah, what is going to happen. And, and that will be again positive. And it doesn't matter. It can be same day. It, it can be rainy. It can be same ugly weather. But where is your focus? Where is your thought is important? As I said, you can probably hear that you can actually choose what you think about. And if if you are catching yourself with some, some not really best thoughts or thoughts that are not serving you and make you angry or frustrated or that they make you feel unhappy or overwhelmed, just really sit down with that thought or write it down. Start to write down some small short journal with morning thoughts and do it every day and and ask questions around that because the thought is really something that that we don't know we need to analyze that if, if you're not sure ask yourself is that true is that really true what i'm thinking where is this thought coming from how am i choosing to react what am i making this mean what am i judging here and observe it and always don't try to push that thought away just really observe it welcome it acknowledge it or feel it and it's your thought that's fine we are not what we think it's just don't take me wrong this is the major thing because i know there was a lot of questions around we are what we think or we are not what we think but you can have you can have horrible thoughts but most important is action because you are not your thought if something horrible is coming to your mind and and you're like oh how i can even think about that just really analyze where is that coming from and say thank you i don't want to have you this is the thought that i'm yeah i don't want to attach any feelings and when you don't attach to that thought any feelings emotions any energy and you just let it go like a, like a clouds on the uh, on the sky just really let it go just just let it go and um 
and welcome another thought. The most important thing is to be aware what we think. And uh, if you are aware of what you think, you can actually change that. Building up self-awareness is more about like start to build up all this awareness around your thoughts, around your attitude, what language you're using when you speak and uh, maybe what beliefs you have, what limiting beliefs you have. It's a lot of things that we will build up and I will talk about them all. But let's start with just simple morning waking thoughts. You will wake up in the morning and just write down first one or two things that you're thinking about and observe it, acknowledge it, as I said, and slowly after a week or two, when you are doing this, start replacing that thought with something better, what will make you feel better. That means if if your thought will be all the time like, I'm late, just try to think, okay, what will be better or what will make me feel better when I wake up and go to sleep with that thought. Think about that before you actually going to sleep and, and set up yourself or prepare yourself for, let's say, morning thought that, yeah, today will be a great day. I can't wait to wake up and, and, and be with people. Or I can't wait to see my family and kiss my kids, you know, or, or doing something or kiss my partner. I can't wait to make breakfast and have breakfast together, all family. Whatever it is for you, uh, just just replace slowly that thoughts they are not serving you with thoughts they actually serve you and make you feel better. This is just a start, but there are a lot of other activities we can use for building up the self-awareness. And uh, the first first thing, as I mentioned already, the, or the second thing was to keep the journal. Journaling is really great because you're actually giving break to your brain because you're putting everything on a paper. It's the same when you are putting the task list on the paper. You actually put your brain, you know, in kind of break and it's uh, it feels better better because it releases out everything what needs to be out and you don't think about that anymore just just write down on the paper whatever it is for you and just just start to keep journal that's a really good one and uh, what is great another exercise for for self awareness i would call it judgment judgment watch or comparison and think about that as a second let's say it's a second exercise think about that that you are uh, in the work and uh, you just came to the office and uh, now you see I don't know your colleague in this amazing dress looking super great and and you put yourself down straight away because you will be like oh we have just that meeting and she dress up she will be you know she will be the star and you're already putting yourself down and there is this is the stretch for for another awareness exercise because when we compare ourselves or we judge other people, positive or negative way, it doesn't matter. We're already changing the energy within ourselves and our brain is occupied by by different emotions and different different thinking. It's it's already occupied by by thinking around like are we are better or, or worse. And you're comparing yourself and you're taking that energy away from you. That means you actually don't perform on the highest levels. I always say just just uh, stop yourself during the day and think about that. Where are you judging or where are you comparing yourself? And as an example, it can be you judging the weather. It can be anything around the weather. It can be anything around other people. Or if you're judging yourself, like, oh, yeah, I don't look good today or I don't feel great. Be aware of that because judgment is really a huge thing that we all do. And we are doing that all the time, every day. Stop to judge environment or other people or yourself and stop to compare yourself from the time that you start to come when you're actually comparing yourself straight away you feel worse and I can tell you that because we are all doing that and I would I will call you on that just just really take yourself on judgment watch and maybe journal that or write down somewhere that you actually oh I did this today I actually judged someone and write it down because this is these are the these are the things that are influencing your behavior and your action. And when I'm saying action, for example, I had experience with my client and uh, she didn't feel very self confident and and she went to the networking event and she told me like I just I just walk into the room and I saw all these amazing looking people all dressed up and I just didn't have time to dress up and I just. They were just so amazing, you know, and I thought like everybody's successful 
and I felt so bad and all that evening all the networking wasn't really great I didn't 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 have any great connections didn't have really great conversation with anyone and I asked her can you imagine that you walk into that room and before you walk into that room before you open the doors you will tell yourself like it doesn't matter how people look like most important is how we will talk together what and how I can help them and what can I do for them and maybe what they can do for me how we can actually make our life better during these two hours of networking how we can enjoy and and I said you will straight away focus on on how you can actually enjoy that time but you will stop to really focus on how somebody is dressed up and what what they wear how they look like because that is not true that's something again it's our perception because she felt really bad because she didn't dress up that means she straight away put herself down and it's like yeah it's it's probably it's, it's like she squeezed herself and she was already less than everyone and she put everyone else on pedestal how you can have great conversations when you're already coming to the conversation with thinking that I'm not good enough for these people or I'm not good enough probably even have conversation with them. All evening with influence, she didn't enjoy it. She didn't have a great time. She didn't make any connections and, and she didn't have really great conversations. And, and it was only because she compared herself straight away with first image with everyone else in the room, even though she didn't know that those people. And just imagine that you can change the experience. You can change your experience absolutely 100%. You can experience great evening in the same dress. Everybody can be dressed up. You don't need to be dressed up. And you will actually experience great evening and have great conversations if those things didn't happen before. Because she wouldn't be creating story about the, the how, how amazing everyone is and how she is not. That will change all thinking when she will think about herself like she's same as this, those people and they can have amazing conversation and she will create a story around that and the story will actually serve her and she will respond, she will be smiling, she will be feeling amazing, she will probably uh, do better choices, she will probably pick up better people to talk to, you know, it's it's all just that one simple thought and story she created that changed all her experience from from the networking event that's just example but there is so many situations we can do it every day and we can catch ourselves what do we think in the morning and how we judge ourselves and others and how we compare our, uh, ourselves to others and uh, yeah there's a lot of other things you can ask for feedback or you can meditate you can write down your plans, your goals. There's so many techniques to start to build up awareness, self-awareness. I will talk about that more because this is a huge topic and I really want you to start to be self-aware and use conscious mind. And why is that important in a business or career? Because your decisions will be high quality decisions. Like your decisions will be coming not from emotions and frustrations or anger, but you will respond, you will be in ease, you will be actually thinking about other things around uh, and why you're going to make that choice. And they will be not just based on emotions, but it will be probably based on information, on conversations or some research, but you will have time and you will allow yourself to really think about that respond because you are not covered with all these reactive emotions. Just remember that, because that has really big big uh, influence. That has really huge influence on your business and on your career. And I would say also in a relationship or in family environment, it's so important to you know stop to scream at each other and, and really start to think for the other person. Maybe they feel bad because something happened to them, or maybe they just didn't have the great, great day. And you are the person that you want to support your family, your kids or your partner. That I think that's uh, most important to start to really probably notice if that is just your story that you created. And it's not really, there is no fact behind. There is not like you saw something or, you know, it's just your story. Of course, sometimes that story can be true, but that's where we are going. We need to be aware of that, if that is truth, and not just create it in our mind. Because usually what happens when we create a story in our mind, we know already scenario. That means we know there will be something happening, we will be screaming at each other, there will be some 
overreaction. But at the end, you know, we will don't talk together. We will walk out of the room. We will have really bad evening. But next day we will just talk together. Or maybe after three days. It depends <laughs> what kind of person you are. But sometimes people don't talk together for a week. Why you would want to destroy all week with your kids or in partnership? Why you would want to hold the, the anger or frustration for all week? I always said angry people are not healthy people. That means just release that anger, talk about it and, and start to think where is that coming from. Really find what is true and really find where these all thoughts are coming from. That's very important. Okay, that's enough from me and uh, I will see you next time and I will talk more about awareness and uh, how we can actually build self-awareness. Also, I will talk a lot in our webinar about the about decision making and how actually when we are a self-aware person and conscious person, how we can make great decisions. And uh, yes, that will be all in uh, our next podcast and webinars. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on alex uh, at thementoringeffect.com or our website, thementoringeffect.com, and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Have a lovely day. Bye.